Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. So what is coaching? With everything going on in the world, and not just the pandemic, But the great resignation, you know, so often the great resignation or terms like that become these fads or statements that, you know, we as outsiders use to, you know, show our uniqueness or our point of differentiation. When in fact, this is really real. We have never in the United States had such a mass exit of people quitting their jobs and the highest percentage of people quitting their jobs, not having their next job. So what is coaching? And why do I frame it that way? Coaching has to be defined. Coaching is not a reaction to what somebody does wrong. It is not a reactive mentoring methodology. Coaching is a proactive, scheduled interaction between people, whether one-on-one or in a group, that leverages people's strengths that ultimately opens doors where there are opportunities to improve and raise your game. Some key words, proactive, scheduled, strength-based. We have to invest in people positively. See, for 26 years at Progress Coaching, especially in the last 10 years with the proliferation of social media, it has been suggested And has been statistically proven that people don't quit organizations, they quit their bosses. So when we talk about talent development and retention, if I want to know what a person is like to work for, I can go on Facebook or LinkedIn and find somebody who knows that person, make a few phone calls and say, what's this guy or lady like? Yet something interesting is happening. People are now quitting companies. See, when people are having policies of flexible workforce or flexible workplace policies, that's affecting people's decisions. See, something happened during the pandemic. People started to work at home. And here's the funny thing. Companies' financials actually improved. Many industries did quite well. The thought of letting employees work at home, could we trust them? Something interesting is happening right now. People are quitting companies. So if there's an employee who does not agree with the company's policy on workplace flexibility, it's prompting people to look for a job. Now, here's the funny thing. We have not just one, but multiple, multiple clients that are bringing up, headhunters are calling our people. We've got a company with flexible workplace policies, and they're going to give you 20 grand more. Guess what's happening? People who could even be very happy with their bosses are now quitting companies. This is a tough spot for upper level management. This is a tough spot. There's no getting around it. See, there are some companies, and I think it was Jamie Dimon at JP Morgan who came out with a memo saying, everybody back in the offices. And I think that was June of 2021. And there was some backlash. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm certainly not the person to judge him. Yet it shows people's frustrations with what has occurred. We have clients who have never, ever had flexible workplace options. 
and were forced into it due to the pandemic and are now finding out their people love it. They don't have to drive into work. They're saving an hour a day. They're at home more with their family, their kids. They find themselves less interrupted. And yes, it's come at the expense of social interactions. So let me just be candid. This is a mixed bag. This podcast episode is not about solutions, yet it is about the validation and the legitimacy of proactive scheduled coaching. If we are not meeting with our people, we are wondering. If we are not scheduling time with our people, and if we tend to react to what's going on, human nature is we're going to react to what we want to fix or what we see is wrong. So remember, when we're investing in other people, it has to be scheduled, it has to be proactive, and we have to invest in people's strengths. Here's why. The Gallup organization reports that people engage eight times more when we invest in people's strengths or we lead with strength-based feedback. Think about that. The Progress Principle. Love this book by Teresa Amable at Harvard. 76% of the people in her study said they were at their most motivated state when they were progressing and improving in their job. Now, if you're fortunate to provide workplace flexibility and you acknowledge what people are doing well and you celebrate them, you've insulated yourself pretty well. And if you're having career conversations and you know what motivates each and every one of your employees, guess what? That's a tough boss to leave. And boy, oh boy, if the company provides services or latitude for leaders to work with his or her employees, For career development, that's a tough organization to quit on. People are now quitting their jobs outside of their bosses. What is the solution? Now, there's a mixed bag, like I said earlier. The solution is we have to schedule time with our people proactively. See, We're working with about seven or eight companies right now going through very stressful times, especially with supply chain related issues. And we talk to managers all the time and they bring things up like, well, our desk is just filled. There's so much work and it's the stack keeps growing. So what do you talk to your employees about? Well, to try to mitigate, you know, as much of that risk with the work and, you know, try to decrease that stack. I said, so you're coaching to the work, not to the person. So we have to coach people who produce the work. We just can't coach to the work. Let me give you an example. A sales leader can't just talk to a salesperson solely about numbers and say, you got to get your numbers up and we got to finish the quarter strong and you got to win this deal. I'm not saying that's wrong, but if that's the only thing you've done, you've commoditized the relationship. So in essence, we have to coach that person to say, you know, where do you feel confident in the sales process? Where do you feel like you have opportunities to raise your game? What can we do together to position you to not only address those skill sets, but position you to consistently hit your numbers? We have to coach people who produce the work. And sometimes that requires conversations outside of the work. People are quitting. But they're not just quitting because of their boss. Yet it is now prompting bosses to do what? To coach, to be proactive, to be strength-based, and to schedule time with their people. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called coach to you where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21-day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called coach to you We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.